before sitting down would you raise your right hand if you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth as you shall answer unto God yes sir please proceed and the defense will make that thank you judge good morning sir how are you good thank you can you just please tell us your full name and spell both of you, spell your name for our court reporter it's Kelly Sinareski K-E-L-L-Y C-I-N E-R-E-S-K-I. Okay, and Mr. Sinareski, um, what is your profession or what do you do for a living? I'm a pastor. And where are you a pastor? In Seward, Alaska. And how long have you been in Seward, Alaska? Uh, this time around, seven, going on 17 years. All right, and are you originally from Ohio? Yes, sir. Can you explain that to us? Um, I grew up in Menford and um, went to Alaska right out of college in 1986. Uh, stayed there till 2000, came back in 2000, pastored in Minford, Ohio for, from 2000 to 2006, then went back to Alaska, been there ever since. All right, and so you graduated from high school in Minford? Yes, sir. And what year was that? 1985. And what did you do right after that? Went to play football. Where did you play football? Uh, Fairmont, West Virginia. All right, so you went to college? Yes, sir. At Fairmount University? Fairmont State University. Fairmount State. And is that where you got, is that where you decided to become a minister? No, sir. I was called to preach at 13 years of age. Is that right? And uh, kind of ran from it a little bit. And then when I was, went back to visit my parents who were missionaries in Alaska, starting churches, God got a hold of my heart and I surrendered to go back into preaching. So. Okay. So when did you start preaching? Um... Well, 13, I preached my first message, but, okay. but as far as pastoring, it wasn't, I was ordained, I believe it was 92. I'm Thank sorry? You. In 1992, I was ordained. All right. And when did you start a church in Ohio? I didn't start a church. I took over a church called Rivers of Joy Baptist Church. Pastor Quentin Keene pastored that church prior to me, and then I pastored it for six years. But that church is no longer in existence. It closed last year. All right. And where was that church? I'm Minford, Ohio. All right. Is that the only church uh, you pastored in Ohio? Yes, sir. All right. And can you just describe what what your uh, what that was like and what the daily duties were? Et the church in Ohio? Yes. Um, it was it was completely different than what I experienced my first ten years of pastoring. Um, it was a very needy church. A lot of elderly people. I did over 200 funerals um, in my six years there. A lot of hospital visitation, a lot of people, a lot of, Brother King reached a lot of uh, people who were, you know, down and out. Um, we had a lot of people who were addicted to drugs, um, and then God did a work in their heart, and they got saved, got out of that lifestyle, and our goal was to help counsel people to truth, and help them change their lives, and get them on to a better path. So. All right. And while you were at that church in Minford, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Did you meet the Wagner family? Yes, sir. Can you explain that? Yes, sir. I met the Wagner family. Actually, the, our church there worked in another little mission over in, Luke, in what's called Lucasville Flats. And there was uh, Frederica Wagner um, had a building there. And we met um, the Wagners the first time, I believe, there at the Lucasville Church. And then they started attending our church in, in Menford. And when I say the Wagner family, who did you meet? Um, Frederica, and Billy, Angela, George, and Jake. And do you recall about what year that was? Let me think. Um, probably, let's see, 2000, probably 2002, 2003. All right. And do you recall uh, whether George, you know George over here, right? I do. In fact, uh, you were the pastor at his wedding, isn't that right? Yes, sir, I was, 2012. And so when you first met him, do you have any idea how old he was? Was he a child? Was he an adult? He was still a young teen, okay. or beginning to 12 or 13. Okay. And so you met him, his brother Jake? Yes, sir. His father Billy? Yes, sir. His mother Angela? Right. And, and were they active, well, as a family, were they active in your church? Very active. Can you describe that? Um, well, they, they would not only be in our church, but they was also at the Lucasville Mission. Um, they would help uh, not not only do the meals, and we would give a meal and try to help people out and work with people, but they would serve by gifts. I mean, uh, 
they worked hard um, to try to help those people, and then they would work in our church. They were involved in vacation Bible schools, to camps, to, I mean, you name it. We, anything a church does, they were there. Revivals, uh, we did a spiritual warfare conference, they were there every night. Um, plus, they went through our 16-week discipleship program that was at their house um, at least once a week for 16 weeks, and, uh, you know, a good family in our church. All right, and did you have this, what you just described, was that with Billy and Angela, or was it with the children, or can you break that down a little bit? Mainly Billy and Angela um, was the ones who would do the Bible study. Both uh, Jake and George would help serve at the mission. They would do work and uh, help do those kind of things, help set up, but a lot of times they were part of the programs that we were doing for the kids. And did you develop a relationship with Billy? Yes, sir. Um, and was are you and Billy about the same age, or what's the age difference, would you say? You know, I think he's younger than me. Okay. I, I'm not sure. I don't think I ever discussed that with him. Okay. Did you have similar interests? Um, you know, I, I have an interest in trying to help people, and uh, anybody that will let me minister to them and work in their life, that's what I want to do. All right. And did you minister to Billy? Yes, sir. And did he appear to be in need of, of your service? You know, he had a desire to turn his life around. Um, he had told me about some things in his past, and uh, he, had a, he had a desire to live a better life, and his kids to live a different life than he had lived. All right. Do you remember where they lived when you visited their home? Yes, sir. I couldn't take you there today. I could get you close. Okay. Um, but I, I, I remember I, I drove there at least once a week for quite a while. All right. Um, if I told you they lived up Bethel Hill, off Bethel Hill Road, up a long driveway, does that? Yes, sir. Does that ring a bell? It was country. Yeah. It was country. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how often would you visit that home, and in like what years would you say? Um, I want to, you know, I could be off on dates, but I often, uh, at least, like I said, at least for sure, there for a while it was every week, and there, then after that, at least once a month, I had a son that was friends with the Wagner boys, and um, that was one of the few homes that I'd let him go go to, um, and he'd go out there, and they it was a great place for kids. All right, that's your son. What's your son's name? Caleb. All right, and Caleb was about the same age as, as George and Jake? Is I that... think he's in between them, yes. Okay, and so, as I, as I understand what you're saying, you trusted Caleb to go out there without you being there? Yes, sir. All right, yes, and did he in fact do that? Yes, sir, he did. All right. Do you know if he spent the night at all, or? You know, one of the only places he ever stayed the night, growing up in his life, I don't, I didn't allow that, but that he did. Yes. All right. And uh, did you ever do any work out at the Wagner residence? Yes, sir. I'm a journeyman electrician, and I helped wire the house they were working on. All right. Uh, and. How would you describe uh, the Wagner family based on your observations and your experience? Um, I guess I'd ask you to explain the question, to try sure. to describe them. Sure. Uh, you spent time with George, mm -hmm. Jake. Angela and Billy. Angela and Billy, correct? Mainly Billy, more than, Billy more than all of them. All right, but do, you were out at their home. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, you saw them at church doing various things. Yes, sir. So, so what was your impression of, of this family? They were a close family. They, um, they worked together. They, you know, they, they were a family that was um, trying to find the relationship with the Lord and turn their life. I mean, I, I saw them get rid of things in their home, uh, movies, stuff that, you know, that would affect children or affect their home, I, I saw them make really good decisions. I mean, showing up Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, um, it was a time period, and I believe that they were, they were making a turnaround, you know, and doing really well. And this was between 2000 and 2006? Yes, sir. That's when you were in Ohio? When I was in Ohio. In that time period, what year they came, I'm not exactly sure. Okay, fair enough. Um, did you notice any differences between George and Jake? Other than, yes, in, in, in a sense, Jake and, and George, George was, uh, he's the older brother um, and played that part. 
as the older brother. J Jake was more the baby of the family and uh, played that part, I guess. Is All right. Um, do you know whether they were homeschooled or public schooled? Do you know anything about that? They were homeschooled. All right. And did you notice any differences, like in their abilities, between Jake and George in your observation? Yes. Can you explain that? Um, I would, I mean, I've, I've been a football coach. Um, I've worked with the public school system quite a bit in Alaska. I would have, um, Jake would have been a, a young man that would have had an IEP, um, you know, an individual education plan. And um, he would have been considered, um, I, I mean, I'm not a psychologist, nor do I have any of those type of licenses. Sure. Yeah. But he would. Well, I'm not sure what question was asked, but it does sound like we're... Well, well I'll rephrase it, John. All right. Um, well, I'll it. Did you notice differences between Jake and George? Yes. All right. And how would you describe those differences based on your observations? In a short, George was smart and Jake struggled. Uh, was George more independent than Jake? Yes. Did there ever come a time when you uh, worked with Frederica over at the Flying W or with her church? I worked with the church, the mission in the, um, over in Lucasville, and then I did a wedding for George and Tabitha at her church. All right. Tell us about her church, what you know. Really, I flew in and flew out. I, I really, what I know is I, it had poles in it and, and uh, I did the wedding. I okay. really don't know much, of my, much about that church. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you were asked to perform the wedding for, for George and Tabby, is that right? Yes. All right. Had you met Tabby before this? You know, I'd like to say I did, but I don't, it's, I don't know. That you don't sure. remember? No, sir. Okay. Um, but you were happy to fly in from Alaska and perform the wedding. They were family friends. They had, I, I had met, I guess I'd had the discussion with George about both Hannah and Tabby being there on the farm with the boys. Um, and so I, I guess I had met him. I'm just not sure of the timing of all that. Sure. Um, did you become aware, like between 2000 and 2006, whether uh, Tabby was living with the wedding? I believe they, she was. All right. Did you discuss this with Billy? Yes, I did. All right. And what was your discussion in general? Basically, Billy, this isn't good. <laughs> Things what? happen between boys and girls. Okay. Kind of and so you were concerned? Yes, sir. All right. Um, were you aware of any criminal activity up on Bethel Hill that Billy and Angela were involved with? No, sir. Right. I'm, prior to the stuff that, prior to him coming to church, there was things that he had told me he'd gotten trouble for, and okay. I think that's court record already. So. Sure, but between the years 2000, 2006, that's kind of when you were in Ohio. And, right, and, right. And I knew nothing that he had done or was involved in. I would not have let my son go there, nor would I have been a part of that. Sure. So. And, and why did you leave Ohio to go to Alaska? God told me to. I didn't want to leave, but um, a church in Seward had went through a, uh, a split, basically. And I, God said, go back. And so I left the church in Ohio and went back to Alaska. And, and you had some connection to Alaska previously? I had actually pastored the church I'm at now prior to, before coming to Ohio. Okay, so you first pastored a church in Alaska. The same church I pastor now. Yes. Same one now, but you had left to come to Left Ohio. for six years, and I've been back to that church. And then you went back. Years. Yes, sir. All right. Um, did the Wagners ever visit Alaska, as far as you know? Yes, sir, they did. Tell us about that. Um, when I told them I was going back to Alaska, they said that they wanted to go with me. Um, and um, basically, they had come. We were there 2000. To, uh, I mean, 2006, I believe they came around 2008 on a vacation and spent a couple weeks in Seward and uh, traveling around Alaska a little bit. 
And you met with him at that time? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. All right. And, and they expressed a desire to live there or not? Or? They did. Yes, sir. Right. But they returned to Ohio? They did. All right. And uh, were you aware that they uh, came up to Alaska again after that? Yes. All right. Tell us about that. They, they came up on a, uh, like a survey trip moving uh, to Alaska, but after, at that time, they never came and saw me. Okay. And um, do you know about when this was, approximately? I don't. I, I mean, it had to be, I'm not sure. I, you know, okay. Let me, let me ask you this. Um, you became aware at some point about the, the rodent murders here in Pike County. Yes, sir, I did. And, and how did you learn about that? One of the men in my church from down here uh, called me and told me about it. All right. And was it after you learned about that that the Wagners came up to Alaska? Yes, sir. All right. And that's what you just described a few moments ago? Yes, sir. All right. Did you meet? You, and you met with them at that point in time? No, sir, I did not. You did not? I did not. Okay. Um, and your church is in Seward, is that right? Yes, sir. I'm not familiar with the geography of Alaska, so if you could. It's 93 mi or 120 miles south of Anchorage. It's a beautiful town. Sure. The coastal town. All right. Are you familiar with uh, Kenai? Yes, sir. It's where my son pastors. All right. And how far is Kenai from Seward, if you know? It's 93 miles. All right. And so, do you know where the Wagners? Do, do you know if the Wagners intended to see you? Pardon me? Do you know if the Wagners intended to visit you when you were up there? They actually, they came down, to, brought the, um, the children down to the Alaska Sea Life Center, which is a big aquarium. They had intended to do dinner at my house. We had a, that's the first time I, I, I text, it was all through text, and I believe it was with Jake. I'm not sure, I, I'd have to go back, but they call it, they text and canceled. They said that the kids were tired and they took them home. And so right. they did not come over for dinner. All right. Um, at some point in time, um, you learned that, that Jake had entered a guilty plea in this particular case. Is that right? Yes, sir. And how did you find out about that? I, I don't remember whether it was some, one of the... I think, again, that same fellow called and told me that. All right. And what was your reaction to that? Shock. And why is that? Just unbelievable. I, it's, un it's a horrible crime. It's awful. And uh, did you find out later that Angela had entered a guilty plea? Yes, sir. And what was your reaction to that? There again, just, I, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, it just... It, it just awful. It, does, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense based on how you knew them? Right. Or even, uh, even the why or the whole thing. It just didn't make sense. I got just a few moments, Judge. Good morning. So you traveled all the way from Alaska to be with us here today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, will you get to see any friends while you're here? I did. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so if I'm understanding this correctly, you were called to go minister, uh, and I might have this timeline wrong, you initially went to play football in 1985, correct? Yes, ma'am. And then a year later, you went to Alaska. My dad had had a, my dad's a missionary in Alaska. Mm -hmm. It was a missionary. He's gone now. But uh, so I went up there to work in the summers, and um, so basically that was the first time. Came back and played football again the next year. Met my wife there. It's a long story. But um, what was the question again? 
I just, did you leave your college? Uh, I did. I, actually, I, I left my, I actually uh, worked with youth in West Virginia at a church there before I went to Alaska. But my dad had had a stroke and um, we didn't have the money. So I, we were going to go spend a year in Alaska, then come back to West Virginia. But I quit football when I got married. I didn't want my wife around that lifestyle. So, okay. so in essence, the bulk of your time that you knew the Wagners well was between 2000 and 2006. Correct? Yes, ma'am. 100%. Okay. Um, and you indicated that, that all four of them were very active in the church, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I mean, as far as you had kids participating versus, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Kids more just attending, but also serving, Sure. you said. And in the Lucasville, they would serve food and stuff like that. Okay. So. Um, but Angela and Billy, um, I, did both of them go through this program? Is, what is that program Yes, called? actually, they went through that. Through that, it's a, just basically it deals with 16 basics of the Bible, or 16 uh, doctrines. We start with salvation and eternal security. And we just go through those. And then in that, you uh, I know 16 weeks, why I say 16 weeks, you can go to two years. You deal with everything from marriage to finances to life, those kind of things. Okay. And I assume it's because of that relationship that you had built with them in the church setting that you felt comfortable and confident letting your son be in their midst up uh, on Bethel Hill Road. Yes, yes. And I believe you indicated you were closest to Billy. I spent more time with Billy. Okay. Um, and you indicated there were some criminal behaviors that you were aware of prior to him coming to your church? Mm hmm Okay. And do you remember what those were? You know, it, I don't know the details. I really didn't. I, the past is the past. I'm trying to help him live a better future. Sure. But I believe he spent some time for burglary or something along that line. Um, and I, I don't know the story. I mean, I can't. I don't. I'd have to go back and look. I'm sure it's public record. So. Okay. Um, so if they were committing any crimes during that time period between 2000 and 2006, you were unaware of any of that? Very unaware. Okay. So you weren't aware of, did, were you aware of any of their homes burning down at any time? I was, but I think, did, I don't know what year that happened, but it, it seemed to me like it happened after I moved <coughs> back to Alaska. After you moved back? Okay. I was, and I was aware of it. I wired the place, and I think they said it was electrical wiring. So, <laughs> have you done electrical wiring before? I'm a journeyman electrician. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you indicated that George was kind of the protective older brother. Yes, ma'am. And again, by my calculations, he would have been around age 11 when you first met them. Does that sound about right? I think okay. 11, 13, somewhere. Okay. Ages. And then obviously Jake's a little bit younger than that. I think he's two years younger. Okay. And you indicated that you had expressed some concerns about um, Hannah and Tabby being out there with the boys, living with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. What were your concerns specifically? You rub two sticks together, you get fire. <laughs> it just, you, it wasn't, it was, uh, you know, the reality, you know, his, Billy's comment was, is that, you know, you can raise them up and, you know, his, his statement to me was, I've got some girls to raise up to be wives for my boys, that kind of thing. And I said, that's not smart. <laughs> so okay. it doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. So were you ever aware as to whether or not they had been intimate with each other prior to being married? You know, I was, I was not told that uh, when I went down to do Jake and, uh, not Jake, George and Tabby's wedding. Um, you know, I suspected those things, but I did not, I was not aware of anything. Okay. And you indicated, had you been aware of any criminal activity that was ongoing 
during the time that you were here in Ohio that you would not have allowed your son to go around that? 100%. And are you indicating that when they came to Alaska, they did not come to see you? The first time they came on vacation, yes. When they moved to Alaska, I never saw them the whole time. I, let me tell you, I, I was preaching at my son's church in Kenai, and I saw Jake for sure. I believe Angela. I did see Sophia and Bovine. Okay. And when you say they came on vacation, are you talking how many years ago? We're talking, to what, 2008, so okay. somewhere in there, 2008, 2009, somewhere there. Okay. And you indicated you think you saw Angela and Jake and, and Sophia and Bovine. I know I saw Jake, okay. and I know I saw Sophia and Bovine. And okay. I believe Angela was there. I was preaching, and there was a bunch of people there, so I was talking with a lot of people. Okay. So you did not have a conversation with either of them, you just... Other than how are you talk. doing, you know, nothing, nothing in depth or even about the case. Okay. okay. And did you ever see Billy or George while you were there? No, not that I remember. I mean, I know I didn't see Billy for sure. I'm not sure if George was there. I, I didn't speak to him. I remember. Okay. And you indicated you had shock when you heard of this, mm -hmm. their involvement, the Wagner involvement with this crime, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Unbelievable because you knew them or thought you knew them. Unbelievable because eight people lost their lives. Over yes. basically nothing. I mean, over, I mean, it didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Okay. I have no other questions, Your Honor. Any uh, redirect? Thank you, Judge. Um, sir, did you notice anything unusual about the Wagner family dynamics between 2000 and 2006 when you were here in Ohio? You mean like abnormal from yeah. a normal? No. No, good. Seemed like a good. Like, again, I let my son go there. It was like Thank you, my sir. job is to protect him. So. Thank you very much. No other questions. Any further cross? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. You may step down. Thank you, sir. The Senate may call this next witness. Yeah, just make sure the time for a morning break. Okay. Uh, it is just slightly after 1030. We uh, will be uh, in recess, ladies and gentlemen until uh, 10 till 11 that's just a little bit more than 15 minutes uh, while you're on break do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else do not permit this case to be discussed with you or in your presence do not form or express an opinion concerning this case do no research at all concerning the facts or the law of the case from any source at all do not read view or listen to any reports or accounts of the case from any source at all and have no contact with the participants in the case and that includes, of course, parties, counsel, or witnesses. Anything further from counsel for either side before we break a break until 10 until uh, no, no, no. All right, then we are in recess until 10 50.
before sitting down, I'd ask you to raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer unto God? I do. Please be seated. And the uh, defense may examine. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, please uh, state clearly your full name and then spell your name for our court report, please. Sure. My name is Caleb Senareski. C-I-N-E-R-E-S-K-I. -E -E and how do you spell your first name? Caleb, C-A-L-E-B. All right. And Caleb, how old are you? I'm 30. All right. And uh, where were you born? Uh, Seward, Alaska. All right. And did you spend time as a young person here in Ohio? I did, yes, sir. Can you explain that? Yep. When I was eight, my family moved to Ohio, back to my dad's hometown. And then we moved back to Alaska when I was 14. All right. The gentleman that was just in here, Kelly, is that your father? Correct. All right. And what kind of education do you have? What kind of education? Yeah. I have a high school diploma. And where is that from? Seward, Alaska. All right. And do you remember the years or your age when you lived in Ohio? Uh, I was eight when we moved. And I think we moved in 2000 or 2001. We moved back to Alaska in 2006 when I was 14. Okay. And where did your family live at that time when you were in Ohio? In Ohio? Yes. Um, we lived in Wheelersburg for a time, and then we moved to a home in Medford on 139, All right. I believe. All right. Was, were you active in your dad's church? When I was... When you were in Ohio? I, I don't know how I'd say active, maybe, you know, I, you, sang, you attended, I sang a little bit, you know. You attended church there? Yes. All right, and do you have any brothers and sisters? I do. Can you tell us about that? Yep, I have an older brother and an older sister and then a younger sister. All right, so was your whole family here in Ohio when you were? Yes, sir. All right, and you were attended your dad's church, I assume? Correct. All right, and did you meet uh, George Wagner uh, when, when you were attending church there? I did. All right, tell us about that. Uh, I don't remember how I met them. Um, my first memory of them was we, uh, my dad was traveling out there to do some kind of counseling or something, and he knew that the Wagner boys, Jake and George, uh, were out there, and I was about their age. And so he took me out there with him, um, you know, just play around with them while he was talking to Billy and Angela. All right, and that was when they lived on a farm here? Correct. All right, off, if I said it was off Bethel Hill Road, does that ring a bell, or you're not sure? Not sure. Okay, you were just a kid back then. I was young, yes. Okay. Um, and did you develop a friendship with uh, George and Jake? Yes. While you were here? Yes. All right, can you describe that for us? Uh, just a normal, uh, that first time we went out there and, uh, you know, had a good time out on the farm riding four-wheelers and fishing and stuff. Um, then they, I don't know if they started coming to church after then or if they already were. Like I said, I was pretty young. Um, but uh, would go off to their house often, spend the night there, and then hang out with them. All right, and what type of activities would you do with George? With George? Yes. Uh, fishing, hunting, four-wheeler riding. Uh, playing baseball, all, all sorts of outdoor activities, bow, bow shooting. He was big into bow hunting. Sounds like you enjoyed yourself? Yes, absolutely. All right. And um, were there times that you spent the night at the Wagner home? Yes. All right. How often would that happen, if you remember? Not often, but there was a few times. And um, how was that experience? Good. Yeah. Nothing good. unusual? No, sir. All right. And uh, did you spend the night at anybody else's house when you were growing up here in Ohio? In Ohio? Yeah. Uh, one other person's house, I think. All right. Would it be fair to say that your dad was a little protective of you when you were young? Correct. He wouldn't let you just stay anywhere or with anybody? That's correct. Now, there was a time when you moved back to Alaska when you were 14 or so? Yes, sir. All right, and uh, I think you said that was 2006, is that right? I believe so. All right, 
did you have any contact with any of the Wagners when you moved up to Alaska? Uh, yeah, they, they um, would call, Jake and George would call about every six months or so um, and talk with them, you know, when they would call from, from Ohio and speak with them. All right, yeah. so you maintained your friendship somewhat? Somewhat, yeah. I mean, it wasn't every day or, you know, that kind of thing. It was just, like I said, about every six months to see what was going on. Sure. So. And was there a time when the Wagner family came up to Alaska? Yes. All right. And do you know about when that was, about how old you were, for example, uh, the first time? I think I was driving, so I might have been 16, somewhere in there. And, uh, because I do remember taking them. We went fishing in the ocean there in Seward. So, and was that? Do you know if that was a vacation or? It was vacation. Yes. And um, do you know if George had a good time up there? Did you talk to him about it? Or I think he did. I think we spent most of the time together. I don't recall everything we did, um, but yeah, I think he had a good time there. Do you know if there was any reluctance to leave Alaska and come back to Ohio? Or not? I know that they wanted to. There was a house close by. Um, our our house that we lived in in Seward, and they were wanting to buy that house, and or talking about it or dreaming about it. I don't, I don't know. Okay. But. That obviously didn't happen. Correct. Um, and they came back to Ohio. Yep. All right. And are you married? Yes, sir. When did you get married? In 2000, <laughs> 2011. All right. And you have children? Yeah, I have six children. You have six children. Yes, sir. What are their age ranges? Uh, zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. Pretty regular there. For the time being, yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Um, and what does your wife do? She's a homemaker. Very busy, I see. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Um, when's the next time after this vacation that you had any contact uh, with the wagon? Contact? Yeah. Uh, Jake texted me through Facebook Messenger um, a few times asking, what are you doing, that type of stuff. Um, and then in uh, 2015 or something like that, he contacted me and asked if Hannah could come up to, I was still at my dad's church at that time, but asked if we had some women's groups or something that he could send her up to, um, which I didn't respond because I thought it was a weird request. Did you know he was in a relationship with this Hannah? I believe so, yeah, because I think he had children already. I think Sophia was already born. Right. You never met Hannah, is that right? That's correct. Um, and you were—you said you were at your dad's church at the time? In Seward, yeah. All right. Uh, do you have your own church now? I do, yeah. And when did you get your own church? Uh, February 2017. And where is that? In Kenai, Alaska. So I'm not familiar with the geography of Alaska. Where's Kenai with respect to Seward? It's about 90 miles. Uh, it's still on the peninsula of Alaska, the Kenai Peninsula, but um, it's about 90 miles north of Seward. All right. And can you describe how you got this church and what the church is like and what you do there? Sure. Uh, I felt the calling of God to, to move over there. And so in... Um, 2016 we actually moved over there and I worked in our school that we have for a little while and then um, in 20 well the 2017 January uh, the pastor that was there had open heart surgery and was sick and uh, needed to retire and so he recommended me uh, to be the pastor there and then in February they voted me to be the pastor there all right is that your first church correct and you're still there? Correct. All right. And can you just describe the church itself and the people that attend and the activities that you do, that type of thing? Sure. Um, uh, I would uh, consider it an exciting church, a young church, a lot of young families. Um, you know, we, uh, we're there to help people in our city, you know, and tell them about Jesus. And, um, you know, we have a lot of broken people, you know, people that come from all walks of life, truthfully. Alaska is a unique state um, in that, but uh, activities we do, um, 
can be arranged from kids programs to uh, you know city or community outreach things uh, I don't know if that's what you're looking for no. yeah sure and and I assume you have services on Sundays is that correct right? yep Sunday morning Sunday night Wednesday night and Wednesday night yes sir all right um, did there come a point in time when uh, the Wagners showed up again in Alaska yes they showed up I don't remember what month it was Jake contacted me and said they were coming to Alaska like the following week and I said uh, well if you're gonna be here let's get together for dinner and um, I asked him what they would like to eat and they said they hadn't tried moose before and so uh, my wife made uh, some kind of moose stew for them and it was supposed to be the whole family but then only Jake and George showed up all right and is this after you became pastor of this church in 2017 uh, I don't recall uh, yes, I, I was, because I was in the pastorium, so yes. Okay, and so explain the dinner and, and what that was like. And... Uh, the dinner, they showed up, the boys, sh Jake and George showed up, uh, and uh, it was just a normal conversation. I asked how family was doing. I did not know. I would kind of heard, but I wasn't really sure about um, Hannah's situation. I kind of heard through the grapevine that she had passed away, um, but I didn't know anything about it really. Uh, Alaska is very far away from here. <laughs> and so I didn't know a whole lot about it. And so I asked Jake what was going on, and uh, he kind of told the story of. Uh, I'm going to object to any hearsay. Well, Jake, you know. well um, to that point, I think it's acceptable. He kind of told the story, but. Uh, so I'll, I'll allow that much of the answer. All right, I can ask another question. All right. um, so if I understand what you're saying, you had heard through the grapevine that Hannah had died. Correct. But you didn't know the circumstances. Correct. Uh, but you inquired of Jake uh, about those circumstances. Or yeah, I, I, didn't, I wasn't even sure that she had really passed away. You know, I, he hadn't talked, I hadn't talked to him. Um, so I just asked, you know, how everybody was doing type of thing. And he let me know then that Hannah had passed away and then told me the whole story of how eight members of the Roden family had been killed. All right. so. He certainly didn't confess to you, did he? No, he did not. All right. And um, what did you do after you learned his story? I said I was sorry to hear that. and. You know, that must be difficult to deal with. And did Jake and, the, and, and Angela and George and Billy, did they uh, attend your church? Um, they did. They all, I don't remember if they were there for a few weeks or not, but at one point they all came together, Billy, Angela, Jake, and George um, came together and then Billy might have come one time after that, but he didn't attend regularly. All right. And uh, this visit that they had uh, was kind of a short, rather short visit, wasn't it? Correct. In Alaska. Correct. And it's your understanding they left to come back. Is that right or not? Um, are you referring to the... Before they moved there permanently. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was going to be a short visit, and then... Uh, assumed they were coming back to get their stuff is what right. I understood. You understood that they were going to relocate to Alaska. Correct. And, and eventually they did, right? Correct. All right. And did you have contact with them then? When they came back? Yeah, when they came back. Yes. All right. Did they attend your church? Yes. All right. Did they move to the Kenai area? Yes. All right. And can you just tell us about, um, well, let's start with Jake. Um, did Jake attend your church after they relocated? Yes. And just just described, um, describe that if you could. Of him coming? Yeah. Yep. Uh, he came, of course, uh, the two kids, uh, Bulbi and Sophia, came as well, and Angela and everybody. But uh, Jake came, let his kid, uh, Sophia, go to class uh, with one of our teachers, and she loved, loved the class that she was going to. And... Um, Jake liked her having that, 
uh, opportunity. He talked about uh, putting her in school, the school we have. He never did any more than talk about it. But, um, yeah, he was just kind of jumped right in talking with the people, very social, um, you know, a social person. All right. So. Was out of the four Wagner members, did he attend more often than the others, or how would you describe that? Uh, I believe so, especially after he started like in Beth Ann. I felt like he was there often. All right. You know. And so you mentioned Beth Ann. Uh, tell us about Beth Ann. Uh, Beth Ann came, she kind of showed up one service, and a family that was in our church at the time had uh, known her somehow, and uh, the, the man of the house said that she was troubled and needed some help, so he brought her to live with his family. And uh, that's kind of all I knew of her, it's, it's quiet, so. All right, so she attended your church as well? Correct. And if you're aware, is that where Jake and Beth met each other? I believe so. Yeah. Right. What, what do you know about that relationship or, or how that started? Or what do you know about that? I don't know all about how it started. Um, I know that um, at some point um, the man that she, Beth Ann, was living with came to me and asked uh, about Jake and whether uh, they should be together or not. And uh, I recommended to him that I wouldn't uh, allow it for my daughter. Um, and he said that she was not his daughter and that, you know, they would, it might be good for her, so. And, and what were your observations of Jake and Beth at the church over a period of time? Uh, they seem to be very social, spending a lot of time together outside of church as well. You know, they were constantly, uh, you know, coming and going together all the time, but they seemed okay. Did you see Beth interact with Sophia at all? Yes. Can you describe that? Uh, it seemed like she was trying, you know, to get to know Sophia and, you know, try to kind of win, win her favor. And did you find out at some point in time that, that Jake and, and Beth wanted to get married? Yes. And how did you find out about that? Uh, they came and asked me uh, if I, I don't remember if they asked me if I could do their wedding or if I would counsel them. Somehow I ended up uh, doing premarital counseling with them. All right. Yeah. And what was your advice to them? Uh, well, we went through all the normal marriage things, uh, talking about the difficulties of marriage and those types of things. and the unique situation that they were in, you know, how they would raise Sophia and all those types of things. Um, with all, just because marriage is hard, you know, I recommended to them that they maybe wait. It was very fast, I felt like. Um, I don't remember how long of a time, but it was very fast. And I recommended to them that they um, wait, you know, till all this, because at that point it was all accusation, uh, till all that was over. Um, but they said that they were in love and that they would make it work. All right. And so at some point, uh, once the Wagners relocated, you became aware of the accusations in this case, correct? Uh, once it came to, uh, back to Alaska. Yes. Yeah. How did you learn about the accusations? Yeah, a family friend, that? yeah, a family friend of uh, mine sent me a text. There was a, some kind of warning label or something or wanted I don't know what it said I can't recall um, but that said that um, you know we want information on this family and it had all four pictures of Angela or Billy Angela and George and Jake and uh, so there's a number on there and you know I thought <laughs> oh my word I guess you know this is a serious thing so I called the number on there and I talked to somebody, I don't know who it was, and then a BCI investigator uh, called me back and uh, talked to me a little bit about the Wagners. All right, and what was your understanding of the situation? Um, he said that uh, the Wagners were having uh, 
that they had moved to Alaska, and he asked me what I knew about them, you know, what I had done with them. Um, you know, at that point when he was talking, I thought that they were, you know, they were looking for them right now. And so I said, you know, he's, they go to my church or they've been to my church. And um, I said, what are they, um, I don't remember if I said what are they accused of or I can't recall exactly what I said. Um, but he informed me that they were not um, suspects or persons of interest. They were just looking at them for this crime. And uh, so I said, what, what do I do now? And he said, uh, I would stay away from them because they're dangerous people. But I felt like um, that I wasn't given any information other than um, you know, his opinion, which I respect the law enforcement community, you know, I appreciate what they do and they have a job to do, but so do I. Right. And what was your reaction to learning about this information about the Wagners and what was going on? What was your reaction? My reaction? Yeah. Um, that they were accused or are you talking about the murders or? Well, after you had this conversation with the BCI agent. What was your what was your reaction? What did you do as a result? My reaction was, uh, you know, I was uh, I didn't know what to think. You know, nobody um, nobody that I know of has, as a pastor has ever had to deal with uh, a similar situation. So I didn't really have anybody to call or ask their opinion. Uh, so I did uh, what I thought was right um, and. I told my church the accusations that were against them, what I knew, that they were not suspects or persons of interest at that time, and that they were looking at them, but that the Wagners claimed their innocence. And so I told them that's all we know, and so, um, you know, we're going to just have to see where it goes, and we'll, they'll be allowed to attend our church. And was there a point in time that... Um, you knew that George and Jake were looking for look, looking for work. Yes. And did you give them any advice or, or help them in any way? Uh, there were men in our church that tried to point them in the right direction. Yeah. And kind of gave them tips of where to look for jobs. Correct. Uh, now, with respect to Beth and Jake, um, they got married, right? They did. Did you perform this ceremony or attend the services or anything like that? No, uh, the man that uh, she was living with uh, performed the wedding and I was not invited. Now, going back to the attendance question, um, I just want to make sure we're clear on that. Uh, with respect to Jake, Angela, um, George, and Billy, which one, if any, do you think attended more than the others? Could you just kind of rank them if you could or explain what uh, you remember? J Jake attended the most. Uh, of course, after I felt like after he was uh, dating Beth Ann that he attended the most, coming to the night services and things, whereas um, Angela and George uh, and the kids would come usually on Sunday morning only. Okay. Yeah. What about Billy? He only came twice that I can recall. He came the first time with everybody and then maybe one time after that. All right. Did, did George come as often as, as Angela, from what you remember? I don't recall. Right. Do you remember one time when he was out in the truck in the parking lot and yeah, you had to go I out? To Say Mr. again. Parker. I'm sorry, what's your objection? Leading question. I can rephrase the joke. Um, do you remember any particular time when you had to convince George of anything? Yes, George was very concerned. Of course, again, it was all, uh, you know, just a lot of media attention and stuff. And uh, George was concerned about the negative effects that it would have on me personally and, and the church. And he didn't want to cause any, any further harm with them being there. And so he didn't want to come in. There was some daily wire people out in the parking lot and things so um, and I went out and talked with them and told them to come in and that it would be okay. All right. 
Did the media show up at your church? Yes, multiple times. Did that cause you any uh, <clears throat> inconvenience or concerns? Or No, I stopped talking to them. Now, once the Wagners left Alaska for the last time, did you uh, have any contact with them? One time, um, a month after they left or so, I uh, heard that they got arrested. And so I called Jake's phone, uh, and he answered, and I said, I heard you got arrested. And he said, no, we're okay. Thanks for checking on us. And I said, how's marriage going? And, uh, and again, this was a month after or so they were married, and he said that Beth Ann had left him. And, uh, yeah, that was kind of, I said I was sorry, and that was the end of that. And how did you find out that uh, they actually were arrested? Uh, I saw it on news media, saw videos and stuff. And, and what was your reaction to that? I was shocked and hoped uh, that they wouldn't, that they couldn't have done something like that, and murder. What, what do you base that on? What do I base what on? What your reaction and, and your shock and everything. Why were you shocked? Uh, because we would all like to think the people that we have in our life are good people and couldn't do something as evil and disgusting as something like that. And, <clears throat> excuse me, obviously um, you became aware that Jake pled guilty. Correct. Can you explain how you became aware of that? Uh, my brother-in-law actually texted me a, a news clip of, of him pleading guilty, and uh, so that's how I found out. And what was your reaction to that? A shock. Yeah, couldn't believe it. It's still hard to believe that, um, you know, he could do something like that. It's awful. And, of course, a little while later, his mother, Angela, pled guilty to charges in this case, right? Mm -hmm. How did you become aware of that? Same kind of way. Just saw a news news clipping of it. And your reaction? Uh, shock again. Just couldn't believe it. You know, it's hard to hard to fathom. And did you have any communication from either Jake or Angela after they played? Yes, yeah, Jake. I would well. That much of the response, I'll let stand. Did you have communication from Jake after the plea? Yes. And what form did that communication take? A letter. And what was your understanding of his um, position after reading that letter? Your Honor, again, object. Well, I'll sustain the objection to that question. Well, let me ask you this. When Jake lived in Alaska after the murders, um, did he ever tell you that he committed the murder? Your Honor, again, object because that call for hearsay. Sustained. Well, let me ask you this hypothetical. Um, uh, the next question. You certainly don't condone murder, right? Correct. If, if he would have said something to you about the murders, you would have done something about it, right? Correct. You called BCI when you saw the flyer, right? Correct. And, and when Jake was in Alaska after the murders, how would you describe his demeanor? Jake was exactly like he was when we were kids. And what uh, was that like? Just seemed like a happy personality, uh, go lucky, um, not really a care in the world, just very uh, outgoing. If I could have just a few moments, Joe.
When the Wagners uh, had moved to the Kenai area, did you ever visit them at their home? Yes. Can you explain that to us? Uh, they had not showed up one Sunday, so it was just a regular practice to go and see where families are at. I think it was the following Saturday that I went and visited their home. And can you explain that visit and what you observed? Uh, yeah, Billy came out and met me on the porch and was talking. Um, and he just described, um, you know, that he felt they were being wrongly accused. Well, I'll sustain the objection and order that the jury disregard what was reported that Billy Wagner said he thought. Uh, but the rest of the answer can stand. Okay. And approximately how long were you, were you at the house? Ten minutes. All right. Did you enter? Who did you interact with? Billy. Was anybody else? Not that I interacted with, no. All right. Were there other times that you had visits at their home? Yes. Can you describe those? Yeah. Jake called one time and asked me to come over to their house, and so I did. Uh, and came to their house and met with him. Everybody was home, it seemed. I did not see George or Angela or Billy, I guess. So I only saw Bullvine and Sophia there. Uh, but Jake asked me to come over and we went. He took me around to the back of their house that they were living in at the time. We went downstairs into like a basement, but it also had stairs coming down from the living quarters and they had all their stuff down there and he was uh, paranoid about uh, Again, I object to any hearsay statements. Anything that Jake said. Well, yeah. Statements, of, uh, I'll sustain the objection. The, the answer to that point will stand. The, the uh, statement about Jake being paranoid uh, will be stricken and the jury is ordered to disregard that. Did you observe his demeanor, Jake's demeanor? Yes. How would you describe his demeanor? Uh, concerned. All right. And what do you base that on? Uh, well, he was telling me that when they're... Your Honor, again, objection to anything that he said? All right, I can rephrase the question. I'm sorry? I, I'll withdraw the question. All right. All right. Um, did you consider yourself to be friendly with Jake? Yes. And basically have a good relationship? Yes. Um, do you feel though, as though you've been deceived by Jake? Your Honor, objection to Mr. Parker testifying for the witness. Well, I understand. I'll overrule the objection and allow the question. Go ahead and ask him. Yeah. Do you feel as, as though you've been deceived by Jake? Yes. Thank you, Judge. I don't think I have any further questions. The statement across the Thank you. Morning. Good How morning. Are you? Very well, thank you. Um, so we're clear. When you were here in Ohio, you were when you first moved here, you were eight years old. Correct. Eight or nine, yeah. Okay. And who are you closest in age to, Jake or George? I think I'm right between them. Okay. What's your date of birth? Uh, 013092. Okay. And the nature of your relationship with them was you would go to their home somewhat frequently? Correct. How, how often would you say you would go to their home? It's hard to remember. Uh, Pretty often, uh, we would spend a lot of Sunday afternoons there um, together. I don't recall how many times I stayed the night there. Um, I do have memories of staying the night there, though. Okay. So basically, after church, you guys would maybe go up to their home? Correct. And you said you did. You rode on four-wheelers? Mm -hmm. And who was that with? Jake and George. Okay. 
And you went fishing. Correct. And who was that with? Uh, Jake and George. Mo yeah. Okay. Um, and were there other things that you did with them? Yeah, we went, uh, you know, shot bows together. George was big into bow hunting, uh, not so much Jake, uh, but we would spend time doing that. Um, uh, played baseball with them. And where would you play baseball with them? The time, I, the memory I have was in, in the, there was like a horse corral or something somewhere close to their house and we went over in that field and we're playing and I had that memory because I was the batter and I hit George with the baseball. Okay. And so who would all be playing baseball when you guys would play? Jake, George and I. Okay. One person would hit and the other two would be in the outfield or how would that work? Yeah, one, one would pitch, one would be fielder and the other one that yeah. okay. and so you were there until you were around 14 years of age right correct okay you were you ever aware of any criminal activity that they were engaged in no okay. or that their parents were engaged in no okay and fast forward to I mean, there was a time when they came to Alaska in 2008, and then in 2017, they actually moved there, correct? Correct. Okay. And then you see a press release, correct? Or you become aware of a press release that says, anybody who's had any dealings with this family, whether it be with guns or vehicles or anything else, please contact this tip line. Correct. Correct. I did not read the fine print. I just saw it and called. Okay. Um, it, obviously, they were being looked at at that time because they were soliciting, the investigator was soliciting any information. Right. Okay. And as a result of that, you called the tip line, correct? Correct. Okay. And then some, an investigator called you back. Correct. You left a message with that. Okay. And what did you have to tell um, BCI about um, any transactions you had had with the Wagners uh, regarding guns? With BCI? When you called the tip line. Oh. I don't recall. Okay. Do you recall um, telling them that they had mailed boxes to you? Um, with the BCI, I talked to some Alaska State Troopers, okay. but that was a different situation. Do you remember calling Ohio, the Ohio tip line, and talking to somebody? I do not recall. Okay. You don't recall calling? Oh, calling tip line, yes. I'm okay. sorry. I thought you meant about the boxes. Okay. Well, during that conversation, isn't it true that you told Ohio BCI, the people that you talked to at the tip line, that they had, the Wagners had mailed boxes to you prior to their move to Alaska? I don't recall. Okay. Do you recall telling anybody about that? They had me ship boxes from Alaska to Ohio, but okay. I do not recall them shipping anything. You don't from... recall them shipping any boxes to you and saying that you thought there were antler heads in it and that they came after church and picked them up from you? I don't recall that. You don't recall it happening, or you don't recall telling us? I don't recall that? it happening. Okay. There was antler heads or a deer head that I shipped from Alaska to Ohio. Okay. But you don't recall them sending boxes to you before they moved? Correct. And them coming after church to pick it up? Correct. Do you recall indicating um, that George had said that he owned every Glock in every caliber and every model? I know that George had said that. I don't recall saying that to anybody. Okay. 
And what did he say to you about Glocks? I just knew that he liked Glocks, you know. Okay. And did they, did George also tell you that they had sold all of their guns and ammo prior to coming to Alaska? Yes, I do recall that. Okay. And do you recall telling Ohio BCI that? I don't. If they were asking you about your knowledge of any weapons or anything else regarding the Wagners, is that something you probably would have volunteered to do? Absolutely. Okay. Would you say that you were closer to one of them more than another? Um, as kids or... Let's start with as kids. Um, I definitely got along with George more. Okay. And then as adults? As adults, uh, when they were in Alaska, George was more distant. Um, and because of Beth Ann and uh, just Jake being more social, I spoke with Jake more. And you indicated that you communicated to your church that um, they were accused but not convicted, basically, or wanted. Correct. And that they would be welcome in the church. That we would allow them there, yes. Okay. I see the difference. Yes. Um, and... Can you tell us how that was communicated to the congregation? Like, was that part of when you're standing before them on a Sunday or? Uh, I think it was a Wednesday night and um, we cut off live stream and I told them I had some business to talk to them about and um, said if I could answer any questions I would, but I didn't really have any answers okay. except for what I was told. So. Okay. And did you, you indicated that you, you stopped talking to the media, but was there a time where you did talk to the media and basically communicate that same message? Yes, I think, I think it was the Daily Wire or something like that. Um, and they said, you know, what do you think about it? And I said, well, if they're guilty, I think they need to be punished. But if they're innocent, I think they need to be left alone. And then the news clipping that came out said, the pastor says they're innocent, leave them alone. So I stopped talking to them. Your first, your first taste of somehow words get twisted. Yes. Um, when you were talking to Ohio BCI, you made the comment a couple times that they were... Um, in 2017, they were, quote, as normal as they've ever been. Can you tell us what you meant by that statement? Um, I don't recall saying that, but I do believe that Jake was very normal. Okay. Um, you know. Uh, and I guess I should, I should rephrase it. At one point, you said normal for them. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, they seemed, whenever they spoke with me, it seemed like they were normal. And the fact of, um, you know, we would talk about hunting and fishing and Alaska things, you know, or memories that we had. Did you ever go, not bow hunting, but regular hunting with them, with, with guns? With Jake and George? Yes. Yes. And would George go, or Jake go as well? Yes. On those? To be clear, we only went one time hunting that I can actually recall. Okay. And you indicated that after um, you guys had moved back to Alaska that Jake and George would call every six months or so. 
Yeah. Would it be both of them, one of them, both of them together? No, usually Jake would call, okay. and then every now and again, you might hear George say something. Or I might say, let me talk to George for a second, you know. Okay. So you'd usually be together when they would call you? I cannot say. Okay. You indicated you mailed some items back to them? Correct. And what were those items? So when they were moving, they quickly were leaving Alaska, you know, back to wherever they were going. And Jake came and said, he asked if the, I could, uh, sh or if he could leave some stuff in my garage and he would have it picked up a week later or something like that. So it was just Rubbermaid totes. And then he also had uh, four handguns that he asked me to ship for him. And uh, I clarified whether he meant through the mail or through a licensed gun dealer. And he said through a licensed gun dealer, to which I agreed. Okay. And did you, in fact, take those, or ship those handguns back? I did not. Uh, the Alaska State Troopers came to my office and asked me questions if we had ever shot guns together or anything like that. And I told him this same story that uh, of the handguns that I was given and was asked to ship later. And uh, they came back that night with a search warrant, and uh, they were very kind, just said, we just want to look at the Wagner stuff. Could you get that for us? And so I handed it to them. Okay. So they didn't do a search of your entire residence? No, no. The, the guns were in my closet. I went and grabbed them for them, and then uh, they all the totes in the garage. You indicated when you were um, asked by the individual that Beth Ann lived with, and do you remember that person's name? I do. And what is his name? Uh, Dwayne Knoll. Okay. And he asked you about whether and what your opinion was about uh, Beth Ann dating Jake Wagner, correct? Mm -hmm. And you said, if it was my daughter, I wouldn't allow that. Yeah. Okay. And why did you say that? Uh, well, one, because I love my daughter a lot. <laughs> and uh, two, I don't feel like Jake was really spiritual. You know, I think he had, um, you know, an outward, you know, coming to church. But I felt like there was no spiritualness to it or realness to it. Okay. And it's, you know, I wouldn't want my daughter to marry somebody like that. Okay. And did you also have any concerns regarding the press release that had been? Uh... My concerns were that if they were, in fact, innocent, that it was going to be very difficult. And um, that, it, you know, marriage is hard in general, you know, and so it would be a difficult thing uh, to start a new marriage and all that. A lot of baggage, I guess you could say. Sure. And obviously, if in fact they were guilty, that was right. at least as bad, right? Correct. Okay. And you indicated that, that Bethian kind of appeared at your church um, because of Mr. Knoll, correct? Correct. And did you guys have a, a program where you can get your GED and other things? We did not have that program. Um, we still don't. Um, the conversation was she's having a difficult time. Is there something we could do to help her? And so, um, you know, I don't know exactly what all the teachers did, but I know that they gave her some materials and stuff to point her in the right direction. Okay. Helped her with the GED? You don't know. Yeah, you I don't know. You weren't involved in that. Yeah. Okay. And you indicated when they came to Alaska, it was supposed to be the whole family, but just Jake and George showed up for that, dinner? That was, yeah, the trip they took before they moved. Okay. Yeah, the whole family was supposed to come, 
and Jake said that the kids were tired or something like that. So Billy and Angela had to stay back. Okay. So it was literally just Jake and George? Correct. No kids? And you were asked if Jake had confessed, if you would have notified the authorities of that. Absolutely. Okay. Is that true if any of them had admitted that they had been involved in this? Absolutely. And you did not ever notify anybody that Correct. they had confessed? Did you personally help them find jobs, or did you say other people in the congregation did? Other people. I have men who are in different fields, you know, those mechanic-type fields, and so they talked with them. And you were asked if you became aware of Jake's plea, correct? Correct. Okay. And did you see that on the media? Did you read an article or actually see him? Uh, or see my hearing? brother in law texted me and said, you know, did you see that Jake pled guilty? And there was an article, and I think there was a, a video of him saying, you know, yes, Your Honor, to being guilty. A couple minutes. And did you learn then that he had said that they all four were involved? I did not know that at that time. Okay. At what point did you know that? That they were all four involved? Yes. Uh, I did not learn that till watching YouTube of this trial. Okay. So fair to say that uh, you are equally disgusted with with anyone that was involved in this. Hundred percent. Okay. I have no other questions. Any redirect? No, Judge. I don't think so. Thank you very much. But you may step down. Thank you. We will take our lunch recess now. Uh, it's 10 till, unless unless council has something else you want to. No, can we talk about something? So, uh, we have one Yes, yes.
ladies and gentlemen, again, it's a matter of scheduling, but 1.45 will be the time that you'll be directed to come back to the jury room this afternoon. It'll be a little bit longer lunch period today. Uh, while, you, while we're at recess for lunch, you're not to discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else. You're not to permit this case to be discussed with you or in your presence by anyone. You're not to form or express an opinion concerning this case until it's finally submitted to you for deliberation and verdict. You're to do no research at all concerning the facts or the law of the case from any source at all. You're not to read, view, or listen to any reports or accounts of the case from any source at all. You're to have no contact with any participants in the case, including parties, counsel, or witnesses. Does counsel for either side have anything uh, further to present before we recess until uh, 145? No, thank you. No, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are in recess until 145. At that time, assemble at the jury room. Thank you.